All praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Makar Kadash. The one on the study of pastors and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel. I'll be talking about the blood of the covenant and the covenant itself and showing that the two things are not the same, right? Because you've got Christians that will say that the new covenant is this. Let me show let me show what a Christian will do when you ask them what the new covenant is. Let me show you. They'll go Luke 22 and verse 20. Likewise, also the cup after supper saying, this cup is the testament in my blood. Is the new, this cup is the new testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Right? So that's what Christians will say that the new covenant is. They'll say that the new covenant is the blood of Yahweh Shai. Right? Which is not true. Right? It's, that's not what the new covenant is. That's the blood of that covenant. But that's not what the new covenant itself is. Now, let me show in the scriptures and back it up with proof in the Bible. This is Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So there we have who the new covenant is for, the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers, in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them. Say, if you have now, what was the covenant that the Israelites broke? Was the covenant that the Israelites broke that they didn't believe in some kind of blood that was shed? No. It's that they was told to keep certain laws and didn't keep them. Now, let me prove that quickly. Exodus chapter 24 and verse 4. And Moses wrote all the words of Yahweh. And rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yahweh. Now what I just read there was Exodus 24, verse 4 and verse 5. Now I'm going to read verse 6. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, All that you have said we will do and be obedient. So he was telling the Israelites laws that they were supposed to follow, things that they were supposed to do, right? And to do them, right? And it, it was those things that they didn't that they, the Israelites fell away from that caused them to break that previous covenant, the old one, right? But what is the new one? I'm gonna go back to it. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 31 again. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Now, another word you can use for covenant is contract, right? So if I said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord Yahweh, that I will make a new contract with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant or not according to the contract that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant or my contract they break, or thou was a husband unto them, saith the Lord Yahweh. But this shall be the contract or the covenant that I make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I'll put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts, and I'll be their God and they shall be my people. So that's what the new covenant is. The new covenant is when a day that's going to come where Yahweh is going to put his laws in the mind of every single Israelite that's alive that he decides to choose at that time. Right? But the new covenant is not Yahweh Shai's blood. That is the blood of the covenant. But it is not the covenant itself. Right? Just like how the blood of the old covenant was the blood of animals. Let me see if it goes into that in what I was reading. Right? Don't go into that in here. But I'm going to get get what it goes into it in. In fact, I'll read one more chapter. Jeremiah chapter 31. One more verse. I mean, Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 34 as well. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbour. And every man is brother saying, No, Yahweh, for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith Yahweh, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sin no more. So, all you people that are saying that the Israelites are cast away with, don't know what you're talking about because the new covenant hasn't happened yet. But it means that when the new covenant has happened, that Yahweh is going to forgive all the Israelites for all that they've done. And that's why Yahweh Shai's blood is so important, man. The blood of the covenant. But the blood is not the covenant itself. Now, let me go to the scriptures and show what I'm saying. Because you already know how these Christians do. If you ain't if you ain't begging it for every Gentile to get salvation, 
more so than you even want salvation for yourself, they think you're talking a false doctrine. If you ain't speaking about saving everybody else and you're full worrying about yourself, they think that you don't know what you're doing. This is Hebrews chapter 9. And I'll start at verse, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 10, I mean verse 11. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 11. But Hamashiach, being come a high, and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Amasha Yak, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living power? And for this causes the media of the New Testament that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. And that's going into how the Israelites were the ones that sinned under the first testament. So how can it be for everybody? Right? But then previously in the verse 13, it says, For if the blood of bulls and of goats, right, and of the ashes of an heifer, man, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, because it was animal's blood that was sacrificed to bring in the old covenant, right? But the blood to bring that was the blood of the old covenant, but the blood of the new covenant was greater than that. It was the blood of the unblemished lamb of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, right? Verse 16, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 16 For where a testament is, then also of necessity, there must also of necessity be the death of the tester. For a testament is of force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all, while the tester liveth. Wherefore, neither was the first testament dedicated without blood. For when Moses spake, for when Moses spoke every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water, and this was the blood of the first covenant. It was animals' blood, like I said, the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop, and sprinkled the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God have enjoined unto you. So the blood of the covenant, the blood of the old covenant, was the blood of calves, right, and the blood of goats. But the blood of the new covenant is Yahweh Shai's blood, the Messiah's blood, right? But the covenant, the old covenant, was that the Israelites had to keep the law, but it wasn't in their mind, right? The law wasn't in their mind in the old covenant, but they was told, keep the laws. If you break them, you're going to be receiving curses. If you follow them, you're going to be receiving blessings. But the blood of the the blood of the new covenant is Yahweh Shai's blood, right? But the actual new covenant is that Yahweh is going to put the laws within their minds now. So they're not going to have to actively go out of their way to think about keeping the law. They're just going to keep it, right? Let me carry on reading this. Verse 19, again, Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 19. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats, with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled the book and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God have adjoined unto you. Moreover, he moreover he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, and almost all things by the law, excuse me, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood there is no remission. Right? So the blood of the covenant is not the same. As the covenant itself, man, and, and an example of how almost all things are purged by the law with blood would be what it says in Leviticus 20 and 13, right? The law on LG alphabetism or what the law is on adultery is supposed to be purged with blood, right? The same thing for where it goes into, um, let me get it, let me get Numbers 35, Numbers chapter 35 and verse 33. This is Numbers chapter 35 and verse 33. So you shall not pollute the land wherein you are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. Right? So if someone's shedding blood, the only way the land can be purged, according to the law, is through blood itself, which goes back to what it said there, with how almost all things by the law are purged with blood. 
Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 22 again. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. And that's why all these people out there, these Christians that try and say that we're wicked for wanting our enemies to perish. They don't know what they're talking about. Because almost all things by the law are purged with blood. And Yahweh Shai was about the law heavy. So in order for him to cleanse things, he had to die. And he understood that. He understood that, man. In order for him to fulfill the law and for him to do things that he had to do, that required for his death. In order for us to be able to have the new covenant, man. For us to be able to keep the laws. But you Christians don't know that. And that, that's why the purpose of this lesson was to show that the blood of the covenant and the covenant are not the same thing. The blood of the covenant is the blood that was shed in order to bring the covenant in. The covenant is the contract, is the laws, is the rules. And let me go to Hebrews 8 and 7 to just prove a quick point. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 7. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. So if there was no problem with the blood of the first covenant, there wouldn't have been a need for there to be a second one. right? There wouldn't have been no need for there to be a new one. But what was the fault of the first covenant? Was the fault the blessings? Was the blessings just too great? That it was too hard for us to hold for such amazing things. Or was the curses too harsh? That if these curses come upon you. Nah it's not possible to put these curses on the people. And for them to repent. Was that what it was about? Or maybe the curses was the law. Maybe do only 21. Right. To verse 10 to around about verse 14. Maybe that was too harsh. Right. Maybe the law on grape was too vicious. Right. Maybe it was too harsh for a man to not be able to eat pork. According to the law, maybe that was too strict for us to have that diet. Let's see what the Bible says. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 8. For finding fault with them. Right? The problem with the old covenant was the Israelites. But because that was the fault, what Yahweh going to do is Yahweh going to say, Okay, because you Israelites were the problem, I'm going to just get rid of you and give it to the Gentiles. Or is it something else that gets said? Well, let's see. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold the days come, saith Yahweh. When I make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. So he hasn't changed who the covenant's for. It's still for them. Just like it said in Jeremiah. So even after when you're reading the scriptures, after Yahweh came and died, after the Messiah came and died, the new covenant doesn't change from what Jeremiah prophesied. It still belongs to the Israelites only. And if there's anybody out there that wants to say that when it says house of Israel and house of Judah, that that's talking about spiritually house of Israel and spiritual house of Judah. Well, just simply do this. Prove or show in the scriptures how you spiritually become part of the house of Israel rather than how you spiritually become a house of part of the house of Judah. Because I know how we can show it according to the Israelite way. If you belong to the northern kingdom tribes that got split during the northern kingdom, then you would be part of the house of Israel. And if you belong to the, one of the tribes that was part of the Babylonian captivity, then you belong to the house of Judah. Simple. How do you say it according to your doctrine? How do you explain it? Or have you not fought your lies up that far ahead yet? More than likely, that's the answer. Now, let me show in the scriptures that the Israelites are going to be changed, right? Because the fault was them. So if the new covenant is being made with them, then they have to change, right? Well, let's show it. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Because that's what the fault with the first covenant was. Us. So in order for a new one to be made, it can't just make a new one without changing us. Because we're just end up doing the same thing again. We break the laws. We go into captivity again. Right? So we have to be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. Right? We need to be changed, man. Verse 53. For this corruptible, which we're definitely corruptible, man, must part in corruption, so that nobody can get us to do any wickedness anymore, or persuade us that being wicked is the right way. And this mortal must part immortality, because when we're under the new covenant, we're not going to die ever again. We're not going to die anymore. Dying's for now. Dying's going to be so old school, man. For us, we're going to be like, man, you still, we're going to look at these heathens like, oh, you still die. That's old news for us. I don't remember the last time one of us died. Well, when, when was the last time an Israelite died? Oh, that was way back when Babylon the Great got destroyed and then 
all those wicked Israelites had to get destroyed because they didn't want to believe in Yahweh Shai. Oh, that was eight. That was thousands of years ago. We ain't died since. And let me prove it with another scripture. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And that's only for the Israelites. Because you heathens are going to be doing a whole bunch of dying in the kingdom of heaven. A whole bunch. You're going to be perishing, man. Because you're not going to be keeping the Lord perfectly. You're going to be dying of old age, all types, types of ways, man. You're going to be not keeping the Lord like how we are. Let's make no mistake about that, man. You're not equal to us. We're not equals. Verse 53. For this corruptible was put on in corruption, and this mortal was put on in immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on in corruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Right? Because death is going to be defeated by the Israelites, man. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. And the law is not going to have no power over a person that has the law built within them. Now, some people might say, well, it doesn't say Israelites in there. So let me show what it says in the scriptures and it proves that Israelites are going to be changed, man. Let me show it. Ezekiel 36, where it goes into how the Israelites are going to be given a new spirit, man. Ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 22. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake. Which ye have profaned among the heathen, whither ye went, and I will sanctify my great name, which will profane among the heathen, which ye have profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, saith the Lord Yahweh. When I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes, for I will take you from among the heathen, and gather you out of all countries, and I will bring you into your own land. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. That's going into being changed, right? And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them, right? So that's going into the Israelites being changed, man. That's going into them being changed, and you can even find it in the Torah, where it goes into how the Israelites are going to be changed. Let me show it. Do you want to check and let me just say this as well, man, because there's a lot of people that try and read the Bible all the time and say, oh, they believe in the Torah, right? But that's not the Bible. Listen, man, the Torah is the first five books of the Bible, man. Don't try and be too smart when you're talking. The Torah is just the first five books of the Bible, man. And let me show you something real quick in case people are like, man, this guy is chatting, chatting smack. My Bible that I'm reading from right now, right, it has the Torah in there, man. And I even highlighted it that it says that, Right there, man. The first five books of the Bible. Right there. So don't and this is a Bible, by the way. Don't try and make out like it's no next book that I'm reading. This ain't my own thing that I made. I never made my own. I never made my own book, man. This is a Bible, man. This is a Bible that I'm reading. Right? The same Bible that everyone's got in their house collecting dust. That's the one I'm reading right now. And the same the same Bible verses that I'm reading that people have got a problem with can be found in their Bible. So why ain't they reading them verses? They want to say to us, why ain't we reading every single verse about love? But why aren't you reading all the verses that say hate when you're supposed to make a doctrine that includes every Bible verse? You ain't supposed to ignore the Old Testament and say anytime it says anything in there, oh, that was the Old Testament, that's been changed now. That's just a very unlearned way of talking, man. To the point where you've got people that will say that the book of Hebrews is in the Old Testament because they don't know anything, man. And anything that sounds a bit too vengeful, they'll just make it up and try and make it like that's the Old Testament. So where if you read Revelation 13, verse 9 to verse 10, they'll say, oh, that's the Old Testament, just because of how it sounds. You unlearned people, man. Anyway, do you want to check the 30? And I'll jump straight to verse 6. And Yahweh will, and Yahweh thy power will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love Yahweh thy power of all thine heart and with all thy soul and that's going into the Israelites being changed man so all the places where you hear and read about in the scripture you don't ever hear about Yahweh circumcising nobody else's mind or do you even hear about him telling them to circumcise their mind or to circumcise their heart let me get it let me get another one Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12 
And now, it, and now Israel, what does Yahweh thy power require of thee? But to fear Yahweh thy power, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve Yahweh thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul, to keep the commandments of Yahweh and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is Yahweh thy powers, the earth also, and all that therein is. Only Yahweh had delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as at this day. And that still stands, man. Verse 16. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. So Yahweh's only ever been asking for the Israelites to circumcise their mind. Now he's let it be known that the heathen nation's minds are uncircumcised, and I'll prove it right now. Well, in fact, no, we don't. We don't even say that in this scripture that I'm talking about, but I'm going to read it anyway. This is Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9 and verse 25. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised, Egypt and Judah and Edom and all the children of Ammon and Moab and all that are in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness. For all these nations are uncircumcised and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in the heart, right? Because they are. They ain't changed their minds to fix to the way that Yahweh wants them to be, man. Let me get another one. Let me get another one. Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 4. Circumcise yourselves to Yahweh and take away the forces of your heart, ye men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my fury come like fire. Excuse me, lest my fury come forth like fire and burn that none can quench it because of your evil doings. Right? So Yahweh has been continually asking the Israelites to change. Right? But obviously, we can't circumcise our hearts. Yeah, that's why Yahweh is going to circumcise our hearts, man. Right? But the beginning of circumcising your heart comes when you acknowledge that you need Yahweh's help. That's the beginning of it, man. Let me get a scripture. You got all these Christians that they think that they know the Bible, man. And they don't. They should be embarrassed that us, that have, might have, uh, an Israelite that's been reading the Bible for one year and been watching the truth knows more things about the Bible than what these Christians that have been reading the Bible for 50 years know, man. You got Christians out here that have been reading the Bible for 50 years and they don't even know what who they call Jesus. They don't even know what that word means. They don't even know. That's embarrassing, man. Hosea chapter 14 and verse 1. O Israel, return unto your how thy power, for thou hast fallen by thine iniquity. There's the point. That's the way you acknowledge and how you begin the circumcision of your heart, man, and be born again. And, and, and to believe that Yahweh died for your sins, man. I mean, excuse me, that Yahweh Shai died for your sins. And that that's where you where your faith should be lying, man. Because it's not it's not gonna lie in you being able to keep the laws perfectly. But the blood of the covenant. Is what you're trusting in so that you can become under that covenant when it's time for that covenant to be installed into the Israelites, man, which has not yet happened, right? But hopefully, I made the point, man, that the blood of the covenant and the covenant are not the same thing, all right? All praises to Yahweh, Basham, Yahweh Shai, Basham, Makar, Kodash, double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone and Shalom to the elect to the nation of Israel.